So before we take a look at the inner, so just a little explanation what are what you can see here. Uh, the little switch is for manual mode, off and auto mode. Auto is as far as I, I remember. You can see here is a little microphone below and you can set the sensitivity and the pattern as it's called. Sensitivity is for the sensitivity of the microphone because this can be uh, sound controlled. So let's try without breaking it to see what's inside. So I had to take out another screwdriver with a longer shaft. So once again the metal spudgers come in. One of the most useful tools in the lab for taking apart, which by the way is a tool every maker should have, a set of these little metal spudgers, which you can also buy in our shop. And okay, the knobs for the potentiometers. Now, come on. And here we are. I have to watch out not to tear off the connection. So let me think how I can show you this without This is the circuit inside and I'll try to unscrew this so that we can safely without breaking In theory, that could be a still a high voltage capacitor being charged, because, but because this is an AC voltage generator, I don't think there will be any high voltage DC caps. So please excuse if you can't see it in the moment, but the video setup is again awkward. And here we are. So, what do we see? How simple the circuit is. Two transistors probably in push-pull mode. Another one probably for the amplification of... No, here's an LM358, a dual op-amp. The high voltage circuit goes to, hmm, strange. Why should an LM358 be here below the high voltage transform? This is the transformer. Ah, the shielding is for the microphone amp. And here is the little electret condenser mic inside. I won't, I think I won't take this apart anymore because I'm really anxious about 
breaking the high voltage connection here. But basically this will be quite similar, just only for more power than the circuit for the little plasma disk and therefore larger capacitors, some power transistors. But basically this will be a push-pull connections of the two power trannies. And, well, it won't be very interesting to see the, the microphone amplifier inside. I'm still wondering why LM358P here, because this is certainly the transformer. So, okay, this was it for a short teardown without going further into details. And now let me try to get this thing back together again without breaking the high voltage seal or breaking off the nipple well, because then this thing would be a case for the garbage bin. So let's see if it's still working. Yep, so no damage done. Okay, that was it for the teardown of the plasma disc and let's go over to the plasma ball. So here we are with the underside of the plasma ball. Let's see what we can read on the little sticker. Plasma ball, 20 centimeters, 8 inch input, 230 volts AC, 50 hertz. Ah, that is for the wall watt. Adapter 12 volt DC 1 amps. So, I think over the years uh, the vacuum inside the ball isn't as good as it was before. In vacuum tubes you have a so-called getter which absorbs any water or oxygen or nitrogen molecules that still are captured in the glass, for example, because even if you have a perfect vacuum in the beginning, uh, this won't last very long. There will always be contaminations coming from absorbed molecules in the glass, in metal, etc. And because this is not present in the plasma ball, it will not keep its initial high vacuum. And, uh -huh, okay, the, <laughs> the high voltage wire just came off. Or it is, again, it doesn't need, I don't know if you can see inside, here is the vacuum nipple where they've pumped out the air and here is a little hose, a plastic hose, uh, which you can see here is inside going to the uh, little black electrode inside in the middle. I don't know if this comes into focus and either it also works only by capacitive coupling or I've just damaged it. Um, perhaps that was the reason why it wasn't, wasn't working so good anymore. Can I feel something with a screwdriver? Nope. So, um, again, what about the electronics? There's a little op amp inside. Again, the same uh, functionality. You have a three position switch for on automatic and automatic means uh, acoustically controlled and kind of full power. We have our little condenser, electret microphone and probably an LM324 or an ah, TL494. That's as far as I remember a voltage switch mode voltage controller. Aha. Uh -huh. So there's a different circuit 
topology, although we have our little trennis here for the audio amplification. And the high voltage part is here. Hmm, what well, seems to work a little bit different. So I won't analyze the circuit here. Let me see if I can read what trennis that are. What is it? Tip 122. This one here. Uh, probably you can't see it on camera. So anyway, the basic circuitry is the same, a little audio amplifier for the microphone, the high voltage generation, and then a single wire from the high voltage transformer going to the electrode. And now let me see, well, how did they do this initially? Can I pull off? Uh -huh. What came out here? <laughs> a little sticker that had gotten here into the hose. Let me see if we can see something with the flashlight. No. Hmm. Well, they must have. Aha. Uh -huh. Ah. Here, there's only a kind of. Let me try to get this in focus. There is only a little kind of mesh or a kind of steel wool or something like that inside the black metal ball. And so we don't have any, um, any soldered connection. The uh, red wire just sticks into the, the steel wool mesh or however this is called. And then it also, it First of all, couples capacitively, I can't get the reflection off so that you can see it any better. Let me switch off. Yeah, perhaps now you can see it a little better. The mesh, the wool, the steel wool inside the black ball. And from there, it couples first to the capacitively to the outside of the ball, which is then inside the vacuum. Then it ionizes with the streaks, the vacuum, the current flows through the streaks to the outside of the glass ball. And from there on via capacitive coupling back into the other side of the transformer. It could even take the path first from here to earth and then from Earth through the little Warward adapter back into the circuit and then again capacitively to the other pin of the uh, secondary winding of the transformer. So again, let, let's see if we can get this back together again and get it working. How did they manage that in the first place? To make this thing, to make it contacting, safely contacting or getting inside the brass wood. Uh, it's the other way around. So I just try out with dimmed light before screwing it back together again to see if this works. I hope, I don't know if, if the sound of the video comes out good because the high voltage, high frequency generation here, of course, also couples into the microphone cable. There is the switch. Yep, I can see the, the pink glow. We'll just put out the video lights and see if we can see this in the video. It's still too bright here. I also have to 
cut the room lights so just wait for a second so now I'm turning up the ISO value of the camera so that you can better see I think this is really beautiful but you can only use it under we're now at ISO 1600 and we're still having a little bit of daylight here so it works again but I'm 100% sure uh, this isn't as bright as it was the, 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 the blue streaks inside. They are not as bright as they were when I bought this, but this is already five or between five and seven years ago. So these things, these plasma balls certainly won't last forever because of the lack of a getter. No, I'm talking nonsense here. Of course, you need a little gas inside, but you need the right gas mixture uh, to have a maximum effect. Obviously this is not neon as in Nixies because neon would glow pink and the only thing that is glowing pink here is the outside when I'm touching it but the streaks inside I don't know what it is. Hi certainly not hydrogen. Hydrogen would diffuse much too fast because hydrogen molecule, molecules are so small, just as well as helium. So perhaps it's, I don't know, nitrogen, oxygen, whatever. But certainly not. Uh, you can look at this forever. It's so beautiful. Okay, this was it for the plasma ball. And now let's try, finally, to smash the little plasma disc that has already that is broken to find out how the green color of the plasma discs is produced. So let's try to smash the already uh, broken little plasma discs. I've taken a look with a magnifier uh, to find out how the green little flashes are produced and it looks like you can see there's basically a white material here and I think this is covered with some fluorescent substance. And there, then there are little bumps um, so that the streak at each bump has to decide to go either left or right so that in the end you get a flash that is not linear but branches off at each little bump either to the left or to the right. And uh, the only hammer I have found here in the lab is of this size. And let's take some little paper towel to protect me from anything. I don't know if this really works. Yep, the first strike already shattered this to pieces. And um, I hope I'm not cutting my fingers now. And this is, this is the material. This is the highest magnification I can get here without any macro lens. Um, so there are these little bumps. That is the clear material. The clear little round spots are in fact bumps in the glass. And the white substance surrounding it must be the fluorescent material. So that's the rest of the first little battery operated plasma disc. And if you have any more knowledge about this material, please write it down in the comments. So that was it for today. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye from Roger. Bye from Kanka Labs.